Computer here in this video I'm going to cover what AD carry or marksman you should play if you find yourself in the role and don't normally mean it. The champions I mentioned will be strong and easily played for the most part. Most of these AD carries will also have some sort of mobility because if you don't mean the role, kiting is generally a little bit more difficult or you're just not used to the kind of pressure an AD carry gets placed under. So you will need some kind of mobility. I'll get into each champion and why they're good, let's get into it. AD carries to pick. Tristana. Tristana has naturally an okay laning phase, so she isn't insanely vulnerable during the laning phase. Tristana is a mid to late game carry, so during the laning phase you can merely just farm up like a madman, and even if you get behind a little bit and you don't mean the roll, and if you're getting slapped around, it won't really matter. Tristana will passively just outscale or out 90% of other Eddie carries in terms of an overall champion. Assuming you're only dying a little bit a few times, missing, you know, a couple of CS, she just naturally scales very well. As the game progresses, you get safer and safer. For a player that doesn't necessarily play the Eddie carry role that much, this safety is key. The range in your passive, the resettable W dash, and of course your ultimate means you can easily escape and peel next to anything and kite your enemy out almost indefinitely and with ease, even if you're just okay at the Eddie carry role. Also, if you're bad in the laning phase, you can do bad and still outscale. Late game Tristana gets a massive attack speed steroid, so say you're minus 3 in lane and you missed about 20% of the CS. This steroid will make up for that in quite a little bit. She is very forgiving to being behind to a decent degree in terms of damage and safety. Tristana herself is also quite a simple champion, E right click. Someone comes near, maybe use your W. If someone gets really close, use your ultimate. Just remember if you don't play too much, don't use that jump aggressively and besides that you should do fine. Corky. Corky is very powerful laning phase which isn't actually vulnerable at all. Corky is a start to mid game champion who has exceptional burst and range. Using these traits during the laning phase is actually quite simple. Simply click your Q when your enemy comes near and they're going to get smashed. At level 6 you can poke them down and push them out of lane without even having to go within auto attack range. The sheer burst damage and simplicity of this champion means getting through your laning phase should be a breeze. Realistically if you don't play the role you won't be smashing people with Corky but due to his simple nature and strength start game you won't be getting bullied yourself anyway. At level 6, Corky becomes a very powerful and safe champion. If you simply sit back in the fight and use your uh, ultimates and Qs into a clumped enemy comp, you will do crap tons of damage. So if you play a lot of casters, you'll kind of like this champion. One of the powers of Corky is his poke damage, which is good at most points in the game. Most people that don't mean any carry actually have trouble auto attacking a lot. On the AD carry role, if you're kind of bad at this as well, this is the champion for you. With Corky, you only have to weave in a couple of auto attacks. You still have to auto attack, but only a little bit. This utility is always useful in to teams in terms of poke damage with the long range skill shots, making Cor Corky a very simple AD carry to be used effectively. Simply sit back, use your burst damage, and weave in a couple of auto attacks. The safety of this range and most of your abilities, and including your W with Valkyrie, makes Corky a very safe champion as well. Most non eddy carry mains have trouble kiting with auto attacks and abilities compared to a true main at most levels of play. This dash makes it very easy to get out of range and throw more rockets. Safe carry, plenty of range, lots of burst damage, does pretty decent for himself, skills okay until very very late game. So uh, just remember not to go too aggressively with that Valkyrie and you should be fine and do plenty of damage and still remain helpful. Ash. I was kind of reluctant to put her in here, but I'll explain it now. First up, Ash's kit is extremely simple. Most people who haven't even played Ash uh, can master the champion in you know, a couple of plays. During the laning phase, Ash can survive or thrive very easily. Her laning phase is a middle to strong ground overall. Her auto attack advantage, which is a 600 auto attack range, which is greater than most other uh, champions, and the range of her W makes it very easy to harass an enemy down, or if you're not confident, to just CS safely during the laning phase. The ability to go aggressive or defensive and get away with it on the nice range of potential W zone and damage makes Ash have an easy enough laning phase which is quite hard to punish uh, in any extent really. In addition, your E can be used to scout during the laning phase means it's hard for her to get caught out as well. At level 6, uh, she can engage or pick with her enchanted crystal arrow. This can be used to secure a kill on an enemy laner with your supports damage as well. During fights, uh, Ash can simply make picks with her ultimate and that's a large amount of what everything you have to do. If you can make a pick with your ultimate on an enemy backliner, even if you die after 8 auto attacks, most teams will be moderately happy with your performance. 
Ash can be a game changer. If you focus on landing a good arrow, you can literally change the game with one good hit. Her range and movement speed slows are also quite useful in terms of utility for your team. If you get a couple of auto attacks off and you get your arrow and use a W and slow half the team and get a couple of auto attacks in, that's, that's it, that's all you have to do. Your team will be extremely happy with that performance. The only issue with Ash, if you're not amazing at positioning, is her lack of mobility. Someone new to the role might be overwhelmed by the sheer amount of focus coming on to them. If you have good base mechanics, it's an okay pick. Just, you only need decent ones. After that, you can use her for a pick and her CC lockdown. If you don't play many ranged champions, I would leave Ash out personally. She's still a good pick, assuming you can get, you know, 10 auto attacks, 2 volleys in your ultimate. That's pretty much all you have to do. She is a utility AD carry, which means you can. it kind of makes up for her lack of damage if you do die quite quickly. Ezreal. Now, first and foremost, Ezreal has got a not a horrible laning phase, but it is weak compared to a lot of bullies. But this is more than made up for with his ability to get CS at max range on a low cooldown with his Q. Shutting down an Ezreal is so much hard work, most players, even professional players, can barely do it. And normal players, of course, lessening the extent, are not going to be able to do this at all. Basically, if you're really poor on AD carry and you're getting zoned to poke down a lot, Ezreal's the AD carry for you. He can sit back, use his Qs, you can't stop the farm at all. He can just keep on sitting back. There's no way to shut him out of XP range either or he'll poke you down. He's got mobility, burst potential, he's got everything. If you just farm passively and work for that late game, you will scale very well. Anytime you're in trouble, back off and use your Q to get the CS. Shutting down Ezreal is next to impossible during the leaning phase, which is one of the main reasons why I mentioned him on this list. During mid game, Ezreal is much like Cork he is always useful in regards to just being able to heavily poke your enemy down at a maximum range. Uh, his Q W ultimate can be a heavy damage and poke tool. Before every fight, Ezreal should be throwing out a barrage of his abilities to wreck his enemies before it even begins. Once the actual fight begins, anyone who's bad at positioning will love Ezreal. His massive mobility on a basically a free flash with about 8 second cooldown if you're landing a couple of mystic shots as well as his abilities range makes him neither on un uncatchable um, and very strong but you do have to auto attack I do want to mention this you can deal insane DPS and keep safe while doing it now a note is uh, that I just mentioned you do have to auto attack watch my Ezreal guide uh, if you want more details with a little bit of practice this Eddie carry can be one of the safest and most useful Eddie carries in the game in addition, he has his 50% attack speed buff on his passive, which means he can fall behind and still remain relatively useful. In addition, his W provides his team with a free attack speed to help auto attack base teams overall in doing damage or taking objectives. This guy's mid to late game, even played by an amateur, is in the top 30% of AD carries in terms of damage and safety together, and basically overall is a very solid pick. And that's it for the picks I believe are best if you don't mean the role. Now let's get into AD carries to avoid, I'm going to be generalizing these into tiers and explaining why the tier of each champion should not be played, let's get into it. Lane Bully AD carries, these will be shown below. This is a type of lane that requires you to do well during the laning phase or they fall off somewhat quite heavily. If you do not mean this role, you cannot expect to be crushing someone who might be meaning the role and do just generally better than you. It's too much pressure for you and requires a good level of skill and knowledge in the lane and knowledge of matchups. Which again, if you don't mean AD carry, probably is not going to happen. In mobile AD carries, these will be shown below. Basically, when you don't mean AD carry and you're not used to using the role so much, you will be very surprised when everyone focuses you down and smashes you to literal tiny little pieces on the ground. Most roles besides mid and AD carry don't have to kite that well, they just don't. Like, they can go in and be bruiserish, they can go assassinate, but AD carry and mid have to play it passively and if you're not used to these roles, it's going to be difficult. If you don't mean the role, your kiting won't be perfect, which means you're going to be more vulnerable than an AD carry main would. Mobility means kiting won't be as much of an issue and it also means, again, positioning is really important in an AD carry, so you also have a second chance if you've got mobility. If you don't, one misstep and you could die. Again, try to avoid these if you can. Pressing Mechanical Champions Basically, don't go for the fancy kills. Kalista isn't maybe amazingly difficult, but she requires a small amount of finesse and an opportunistic nature in the bot lane, which requires you to know bot lane and the matchups quite heavily. And of course, Draven is actually, to any player really, quite a handful compared to most other champions, even regardless of what role you mean. I generally disadvise going for these hard mechanic champions. You have to be focusing on the basics, not the fancy lemon cake kills. 
Final note. I just wanted to mention, I'm not shitting in any of these AD carries. They're all pretty good to some extent. I have not put anyone down without rightful intent. Some of these champions for a player that simply does not mean any carry or play it that much, uh, will just cause them to lose. Play champions out of safety and are useful regardless if your kiting and mechanical abilities are not amazing. Overall, these are the most effective champions. And that's it for the guide, guys. If you like it, like it, dislike it, dislike it. If you like me and love the content, you can subscribe. And if I've dropped the ball and it's completely useless content or not up to scratch, you can unsubscribe. I'm totally fair. Besides this, guys, have an absolutely great day. And as always, best of luck in the rift.